You ready? Boom, boom, boom. This is Mind Pump. Welcome to our podcast. Hey, check this out. Today we're giving away access to MAPS Aesthetic, one of our most popular programs. Here's how you can get access to this program. Leave a comment. The first 24 hours we drop this episode, make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, if your comment wins, you get access to MAPS Aesthetic. Now, if you want to be able to win stuff, because we give stuff away all the time, subscribe to this channel, turn on notifications so you know when we drop these episodes. We drop them almost every single day, and you can only win stuff if you comment in the first 24 hours. So make sure you turn on those notifications. Also, we got a big promotion that's ending very soon. It's Maps Anabolic that's 50% off and our Shredded Summer Bundle that's 50% off. So both are half off. Go check them out before the sale ends. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and use the code April Special with no space for the discount. All right, enjoy this podcast. Do you guys think my lips look natural? I'm going to make this face. Just, yeah, I mean, uh, you it's, look like... Bro, the, 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 somebody thought you had fake lips? The, the, our barber. What? Yeah, she's cutting my hair, and she goes, can I ask like you... Like you got, like, injections? She goes, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, you're going to ask me a question. She goes, do you get lip injections? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Vicky. You know what? She, he you just pouts a lot. She's got, she's like, you got really mm. full lips. I'm like, oh, I feel like this is do? all this is all stemming from the wife beater getting, you know, you coming over, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh you're man. so gorgeous. No, no, you don't. Do you so. wear makeup? Do you, no. have lip, <laughs> do you have lip injections? She didn't ask me if I wore makeup. Do you have eyeliner? No. No. What are you doing? No, it's, so I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Like, do I look? Because you ever seen pictures of people who like bad lip injections? Yeah. Like, why would you think that? You know what I mean? Know, well, bad ones. Stung right? by bees. Yeah. 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 No, these are just these are these are natural, bro. No, you mm. just got a nice little pout. Yeah. To you know it. what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. I never thought you had like big full lips, although I never yeah. really paid attention. I'm yeah. Now that like, you're looking, stop. Yeah. <laughs> just don't lick them because that's creepy. I hate that. Yeah. Yeah. You ever seen? Yeah. It's oh, look at that. See, look at the pictures. Oh my God. What is it? Yeah. Terrible. Wow. Those are bad jobs. That is terrible. Very, very bad. Yeah, the duck one. I remember huh? I had I had a girlfriend when that was first. Uh, this was first getting popular, like you know, in the early two, like mid early two thousands, like mm -hmm. when it first started to get popular. Mm -hmm. And what do they inject them with, by the way? Um, is it uh, collagen? Or? Yes. Is it collagen? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, and they uh, she wanted to do it, and I was like, no, no, don't do that. And I remember we we had been together for like almost a year, and I took off on this trip, and she did it while I was gone. And I came back and he honey. Yes, dude. That's what I was just like. <laughs> Good to see you. It looks <laughs> terrible. What the fuck happened to your it's face? Like duck lips. I'll, and, ma I'll, lip, I'll make your lips swollen for free. And she, didn't have, and she didn't have bad <laughs> lips. You know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of get it. Like, okay, yeah. so there's there's some people that uh, you know are have like no lips. Like they're you know yeah. They're like all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. like. Yeah. I get it. It's just know. it's just the face. They're end. just almost a corpse. They're just yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. So I feel like I I, I feel like it's there for some, but it's gotten out of control. That even people that have lips just enhance it. Just go nuts with it. Mm. Yeah, it, it looks out of balance. You know what it reminds me of? Fake tits on flat asses. Wow, well, yeah. bad call. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Bad call. Small boobs look good with flat asses. Yeah, right. Big boobs with flat asses. It look just terrible. has to. It just has to be well, balanced. So here, otherwise, you're just gonna fall. Here's yeah. the problem. Here's the problem. The problem is, is that our our standards have changed so much that more and more of what is not natural looking now we think is natural. Do you know what I'm mm. saying? So like, you go back in the 70s. And you had a couple procedures. People are like, oh my god, what's going on? Now you have to go further and further for people to even notice because it's so accepted. Yeah, it's so accepted to ha to do all these things. That's like you ever like see walking around some of these Insta models that are like really ridiculous like features like you see them in real life. Yeah, it's it's. It, I mean, they stick out. You're like, whoa, because oh. it, but it seems normal when you're looking scrolling through your feed or whatever. But you're it, right because they'll look normal for a picture because they're frozen. But yeah. But they, okay, so you know who's like that? So uh, remember the Jersey Shore? You guys watch Jersey Shore, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a, who's they, the, they all went Snooki crazy. They went whatever. crazy after. No, Jay Wow. Jay Wow. Oh, okay. She went crazy with the plastic surgery. Yeah. yeah. Now, if she's just in a photo, like like not moving, it's like, oh, okay, she looks normal. Mm -hmm. As soon as she starts moving and stuff and talking, you're like that doesn't look right. It looks like you have a mask on or something. You know. It's now, have on. you guys right. seen like good good plastic surgery jobs? I've seen some good yeah, jobs. I've seen some. Yeah. yeah. I've seen. It's to me a good job is one that you can't tell. You can't yeah, it's tell. very subtle. Yeah. yeah. Somebody just man, you look younger. Dude, you look good. Who's that country singer, Doug, that got the plastic surgery and now he's like, huh? doesn't look like the same. <laughs> Billy, guy Ray, Billy Ray Cyrus? No, uh, him too, though. But who's the other guy? Uh, I can't remember. No, when to fold. What's his name? 
Oh, oh, Kenny Rogers? Rogers. Kenny Rogers, pull up his oh, picture. Yeah, he's got like the oh. wind blasted face. Bro, oh, I haven't seen bro, him. Bro, look at him what he used to look like, and then look at what he looks like now, and it's not the same person. Let me see this. They guy. went ape shit on his face. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah, dude. His he's like his eyes are like Who is it too? It was like Mickey Rourke. I was I was really oh, yeah. like bummed out when I saw when he'd got all that plastic surgery. When he did like, that ah. wrestler movie, you could really he was like, yeah. Oh wow. you know what though? He's still a great actor. Like Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. But look at look at Kenny Rogers. Okay, look at look at him in the bot on the on the very left. Right in the very very left, and then you see what happened to his eyes in that middle one. And there's worse pictures than yeah, that. Yeah, give Doug. me give me like a before and after plastic surgery, Kenny Rogers. Google that, Doug. Yeah, it just yeah. does it. it you just, need to help Doug with his googling, Sal. You're like <laughs> you're like the Google master. You should yeah. tell him what to Google. <laughs> he, I mean, he hey has guys, Google finger. Hey, who yeah. are you? What did you? I'm the hey, Google master. Hey, what did you say on on the see, podcast look, the other day? Look at that. Oh wow! Yeah, it doesn't look the same. Wow. He actually looks kind of good. No, stop. I mean, his eyes are like really wide. Look at okay. Oh, 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 you mean, okay, the left is real. The Yeah, yes. he looks better on, uh, before. Yes. He yeah. looks better before. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> he just looks surprised. Like, hey, wow. I mean, he doesn't look bad before. No, and you Why know what? Why did he change that? Well, bro, okay, this is what I feel for, this is what I have a little bit of feelings for uh, and empathy for celebrities. You are valued by all your fans for your appearance, how yeah. you look. You're known for how you look. And especially kids, especially kid actors. And as they get older, yeah, yeah. it's like, oh my God, these people don't love me anymore. And so you you attach so much to your appearance and it becomes a, a disorder. Doesn't it look like he just he just came back from some like weekend retreat and now he's like a full on cult member? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have the answers. <laughs> what kind I'm of, enlightened. Yeah, can you make me look surprised? Yeah, <laughs> it's like like I get it all now. Yeah, you know it's. It, it, I mean, in the in the fitness space, you have extreme cases of this too, with like the guys that inject their arms and stuff with uh, synthol. Oh, uh, I was watching it. Uh, so. Uh, we've been watching this one series. I think it's on YouTube, but uh, th this guy was kind of breaking that down, and, and the kids were watching, it, and they're really interested in it. And I was, I was just kind of walking by, and they're watching all these examples of guys with synthol and like how oh. ridiculous. Like it, it looks. They look like mutants. They don't even look like. It doesn't even look like real muscles. It just looks like bubbles. Yeah, there was one guy. I think he was a Russian kid, and he was known for in his the biceps. Arms, yeah, and he had to get them all removed yeah, because he got the, infected. The right? tissue died. So he had all this dead tissue oh, in his arms, man. and he had to get them drained and removed. Imagine, imagine how how desperate for attention that you are to do. Well, you're just lonely, and you don't you don't. That's I mean. You have you have to be so desperate for any attention that even if it's weird yeah. looks, you know that you're. It's okay. I just want it. I they mean, don't are they know getting it. like are, are girls oh. like ooh? What's no? This? See, I don't, like I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's just like a attention from the opposite sex. I think it's just intention in general. Like you're somebody oh, yeah. who's deprived of attention in general, and doing something so absurd like that. Even if ninety percent of it's negative attention, that's okay. You're still, so like, it's like the kid who acts out, right? It's like the kid. Mm. It's gets, like Lizard Man who gets no attention from his parents, and so what he, he ends up doing. I have seen Lizard Man. Lizard Man. Yeah. Or, yeah. He, he, he's all in. He's no, split his that. tongue. Like, Look at me. Deal with me. Yeah, his eyeballs are all black. No, I think it's you. You have a distorted view of yourself. So to them, they inject synthol, and to the average person, you're like, man, you don't look. It's like an okay. Have you ever? I've worked with like uh, really, really sick uh, people. Um, I don't mean sick in a, in a bad way. I mean sick like mental in, in, uh, with anorexia. And I've seen, and they've come to me after they've done the therapy and kind of recovered. And they'll show me pictures and they'll tell me, I thought I was fat in this picture. I thought I had. So you think uh, it's that? It's, you're just you're so distorted with your view. I, I think it's more attention. I think it's more that you don't think they look I, at themselves and no, think I'm not, they I'm look not, good. Dis, Body I'm not, dysmorphia. I'm not completely disagreeing, yeah. but I do think that there's more like it's more like the child who got no attention. Mm -hmm. It's more like the kid who got no attention growing up, so he acts out to get attention, even though he just needs love and wants the good attention. Any attention is better than no attention, and so I think it's more. You know, that. you would be surprised. He doesn't have good friends that tell him you're being an idiot. <laughs> yeah, right. Don't do that. Or well, you you would be surprised. A lot of these people they hide themselves, they cover themselves, they don't want anybody to look. It's all about their own distorted view of themselves. Well, not, the guy, sweaters not and, the guy we're talking about. Not the guy what, we're talking about is no. proud of it. Yeah. I mean, he's flexing all the time mm -hmm. and showing him stuff like that. Yeah, so. That is so anti, like, it rubs me so wrong. Not because you're doing stuff to your body that looks weird or whatever. You own your own body. It's just because it's so anti. It's like, you want your muscles. Like, they're not, it's not muscle. 
yeah. doesn't count. It's artificial health. It's, it's not, like the, all the signals of don't health. Act like, hey, don't act like you didn't think about calf implants <laughs> at one point. About what? Calf implants at one point. Never. Yes, you did. No way. Yes, you did. I know you did. Of course I did. I never. Of course I did. No course way. I, yeah, I looked into it. No uh, way. Yeah. Did you really? I did. You looked I did. at the price and everything? Yeah, yeah, I did. Back then. What, I, what are the options? Like, what, what is it material-wise and all that? It's just like boobs. I mean, you go get like a like what type of look you get. You know what I'm saying? Like a rounder, fuller, and a good doctor will tell you like based on- Put a nipple on the back of my calf. No, not like that. <laughs> you know, I want, but, I want titty cats. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to. I'd sh- want bionic ones or no, something. You know, yeah. that's the yeah. catapult. Here's why yeah. I would never do that because it's muscle. I don't care. It's like if I if it's not muscle and it's not strong, it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. But I get what you're what you're saying. Yeah, well, when I, was it? How old were you? Oh, I was twenty. Yeah, I was too, a little. It was right when I started making money. Did and, somebody say oh, something? You're yeah. like, that's it. What do you mean? Somebody gonna, said, gonna, been, some people have been saying shit about my calves since I was a kid. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, <laughs> did somebody say something? <laughs> you see? Just, I mean, I remember, I'll never forget when I got compliments on them. Yeah. Like, those those memories stick out big time. You <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? So oh, I used to carry myself around like this all the time, like my shoulders all the way up, just to try and hide my bony shoulders. Yeah. You know, yeah. like so, dude, I get it. Like yeah. I, that was something I was always conscious of. Like yeah. take my shirt off, I'd be like, hey guys, maybe that's yeah. why you had. Well, like, what's wrong with you? Hey, maybe that's why you had anger. Nothing. issues you were just uptight fine. all the time yeah oh. just super uptight why are you so pissed off i don't know mom he's always <laughs> mad at my brother <laughs> just you know, just, everybody it's just it's yeah whatever. yeah i mean i obviously i didn't do it for the and for the reasons that you said it's like it's a muscle i you know have i and you know i had to ask myself honestly have i ever truly went after it the same way that i have other muscle right. parts you know and i and i never cared enough to really do it now i did when i was competing i mean i i, I gave my calves attention like no like nothing else right because i had to get on stage in shorts and i was like there's no way i'm getting up there presenting this mat like this ripped physique and then i have these terrible calves yeah. so you know, I trained the shit out of them to get them to where they were at, you know? So the stubborn fuckers. Oh, they, I mean, they, they were, I mean, I just, the, the amount of volume I had and they got like, so the way my body type is right. I have very, they got veiny. Yeah. They got just vascular <laughs> and you know, I, I, maybe I got like an inch and a half, maybe two inches, you know, I'm not, no, you gained like a good inch. Yeah, you yeah. and I both were having a good time trying to get our calves. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it, and it, doing it, occlusion they're pumped and they're pulsating and, yeah. the, and <laughs> you know, and being with all those veins. <laughs> yeah. Being <laughs> Being completely transparent, I just don't give a shit enough yeah. to. Justin's to, talking shit because he's got kinkles. He yeah, I do. He's yeah. just got big ass calves. I got stumps, he's, dude. he's done like calf raises like five yeah. times in his life. Never. Yeah. Have you yeah. ever done a calf raise in your life? Be honest. Ever. Why? Why would I do? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. As a demonstration for like my client. I'm like, this is so stupid. <laughs> this like, is so stupid. This is how you do these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I have no clue though. I've never. Yeah, done but them. I probably even got it wrong because <laughs> you know. I, it's like that though. The guy, in the, yeah. the guy in the gym with the best calves does not lift his calves. No. Get out of here with that. You no. know what I'm saying? It's, it's a- one of those genetic body parts. But I will say this, let's be honest. There's a, a good chunk of the reason why people think their calves are stubborn is that they don't spend the time on them like they do the other body well, parts. Well, no, and I, I'm guilty of that. Mm-hmm. I prove that. I prove that. You know, I I definitely got I got to a point where I actually got compliments from, believe it or not. You know, so I know that. That's right. And some girl come up to you just randomly. No, I had a dude. That's even better. I had a uh, guy in a plane. Yeah. I was getting off the plane. And that's he, the best compliment. Yeah, older guy too. He just came. Hey, man, it's. I, Calves are dude, super impressive. Dude compliments weigh a lot more, especially like an old dude, like yeah. an older dude that you could tell has been lifting his whole life and stuff like Depends that. Depends how yeah. he's looking at you, though. No, no, it wasn't like that. Oh, okay. No, no, okay. it wasn't. Yeah. 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 That's true. It wasn't yeah. like it wasn't like, hey, nice calves. Where are you staying yeah. at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like that. Hey, was, your calves are right. Does yeah. it go all the yeah. way yeah. up? Yeah. <laughs> you want to follow me to this bar? <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't. <laughs> no, was it like that type of a compliment at all? Oh, but it, I mean, the amount of effort. I mean, I just. I don't care enough to train them that much right now. Like yeah. that's just the the amount of effort to to get them to you know like just better than terrible yeah. is not worth. I it train. Yet. I'm still mm. I'm trained mine, but they just you know what I it just as a kid I almost never trained them. I didn't have calf machine. I worked out in the yeah. garage in the backyard, and so it was all you know barbell dumbbell exercise. Well, you guys definitely say didn't that, run. I've definitely worked my calves. You know, like I, I sprint. I do jump ropes. Like I you know very explosive stuff. Yeah, that but has fuck to you. I, I I did all that stuff. You know, I played ba- I played basketball. Yeah, jump, yeah, All yeah. you do is jump for a fucking living. I feel there. you. Didn't I do nothing for me. You know? I'm just saying it wasn't like you know I neglect them or. You wore yeah. the strength shoes. I did. I did strength oh, yeah. shoes. I did all this stuff. We actually, so I actually trained. Me and my brother did that too. So the first muscle, ironically, right? The first muscle groups that I was training when I first got into the gym were, were calves. Because really? yeah, it was for basketball. So when I first started lifting, this is before like when I talk on the show about like lifting, I consider that when I was like 
17, 18 and started, got my own gym membership. And then I started to care about right. building a body. But before that I had, you know, 15 years old and stuff like that. When I was a freshman, sophomore in high school, I'd go in the, you do the dabble. All I would, all I would do is calf stuff. Really? Yeah. Cause I thought it would help me with my vertical inside oh. playing basketball. And so mm -hmm. that was the only thing I did, even though I didn't do a lot of it. I did that. I did strength shoes and yeah, that shit didn't translate into anything. No. Yeah. They look no. terrible and they perform terrible. Yeah, no, you just look like <laughs> yeah. some platypus out there on the on the basketball court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was I was I mean I didn't, I didn't do a, a lot of exercise, but I was lucky enough to find the right information and then do kind of well balanced stuff. Lucky enough, more balanced than most people. I didn't just do arms and chest. I did everything else. Uh, but calves was I didn't have a machine. What am I gonna do calves on? Whatever. Who cares? Mm -hmm. I'll just do squats. Yeah. That was my approach. Speaking of the old guy that gave you compliments, have you ever had that experience where you're like on vacation? Does this ever happen to you and Katrina? You're on vacation in the pool or whatever, and the like 50 something year old couple looks kind of, you, know, you can tell they're kind of fit, come over. And yeah. After a few <laughs> drinks, you're like, what's going on here? That's happening. <laughs> <Right? laughs> Why, why are they acting so the, flirty? The, the couple hitting on you? Yes. Yeah. yes. So I less with Katrina. I had a girlfriend uh, before Katrina that I dated that uh, she just attracted swinger people. Hmm. We we would go out. I, I could I could think of three different uh, trips that we went on. That we probably got, when you go to the bathroom, she's walking over to me. Hey, if you could, I know, maybe close right? my boyfriend. Yeah, maybe this whole time we'll she was like a, like a swinger trying <laughs> yeah, to close dude. me. I had no idea. I'm like God, this is so random. Why is this every time we go out we meet swingers? You know, she's calling them and telling them like, Hey, we're going to be in Mexico down here at this yeah. time. You show up. All you got to do is close him. That's all you got to do. <clears throat> yeah. So, no, that that's the move. Uh, I was at a, a high school reunion and one of my friends, like a good friend, uh, w brought this girl. I hadn't met. I thought it was his girlfriend. It wasn't his girlfriend. It was just a date. And so that, then it got me thinking later like what kind of date but um like she started hitting on courtney and was just like kind of like slowly like oh my god i love your hair it was like just kind of touch your hair <laughs> i love it i love how you smell you, you don't look like you belong here you know and, like was saying all this stuff and like Courtney's told me she's like she's like really coming on strong you know and i'm like asking my friend he's just laughing just we're like, just laughing about it yeah. just was like that's terrible but anyway how'd you feel about it yeah yeah but, but, but also you know yeah, yeah. were you considering yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but no, it was just funny to to, to watch all that kind of go go down but i do feel like that's the move Right, you put you know, yes. the girls usually the one that's going to go they're the approach it. Right? They're the yeah. communicators. Guys yeah. are instantly creepy. Totally, instantly. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't work when the dude. You, you have to have that. Speaking approaches. of trips and party, you guys are making me think of something that I've been actually been meaning to bring up on the podcast. Ironically, though, I can't. I'm not now, but I was last week. I think I sent a picture of it to Justin. I am totally digging the. Uh, it's called Red Stag, which is Jim Bean's Black Cherry, and then Crown Royals Apple. Oh, yeah. 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 Those two, and I know, I know, we're not like big the, the alcohol. flavored, yeah, uh, liqueur sort of version. Bro, they're not whiskey. Like, they're freaking seventy. Proof. I mean, they're whiskey for yeah, sure. Yeah, dude, it's just got a little, but, it's got a little flavor to it. I yeah. can actually drink it on the rocks, which I've never. Oh, they're, now, deli are, they're delicious. Are you having it like a uh, weekly or what's the deal? Well, I'm not doing anything right now because of my diet, right? Yo, so yeah, right yeah, now, you're following the Adam Vore diet. Adam Navor. Adam yeah. Navor. Adam, Adam yeah, Navor. Right. It's not. It's uh, you know. I, of course, as soon as I started posting pictures of nothing but meat, everybody's like, "Oh, you're following the carnivore diet." No. I'm yeah. not. Dang. I'm not, I am not following anybody's diet. I'm doing like an elimination thing for myself with my own fucking rules. Yeah, he's including rice, okay? <laughs> you just I, ate a large chicken before we did this podcast. Yeah, But he yeah. does have rice too. I, I, so I had, I've, I've, I've allotted like, you know, and yesterday I didn't do very much of any rice at all, but the day before that I had a cup of rice spread out throughout the day with some of I mean, just to give me some sort of texture. Because I, I don't think that's... The offender, right? So that's the way I look at it. Is I'm gonna, and yeah, I'm gonna, you, you got rid of everything except for the things you, you're pretty sure don't bother you. Yeah, I, I feel pretty confident that, uh, and so far so good, like what I'm seeing, right? So I think that- You're noticing already? Oh yeah, I already noticed my psoriasis doing better. I noticed, what I noticed that I was really surprised is I didn't think that my gut was inflamed. You know, I just didn't think I was just ripped right now. So I just thought, oh, I'm a little soft, yeah. fluffy right now. But literally the the day uh, <clears throat> after I did a full day, so I started it like midday uh, over the weekend, and then the first full day of doing it, the next morning, I woke up and it looked like I had leaned out like 10 pounds, 10, 15 pounds. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't drop that weight. All I could think of was like, wow, I probably released some water, of course. Yeah. But then also, I probably lowered some inflammation right away. Did so you notice? Yeah, and the reason why I think it's that is because I also have been dealing with the golfer's elbow. And that has already started to get a lot better too. So I probably had some inflammation there, probably had some gut inflammation, and already it's starting to subside. So that's what I'm noticing already from it. And surprisingly, what I'm I, I thought I would absolutely hate eating this way. It's not as terrible as I thought it was gonna be. And the reason why I think it isn't 
is I'm very surprised by how little cravings I have right now. Oh, well, mm -hmm. dude, you eat that much protein and meat, yeah. it's satiating as it's hell. Adamgenic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you come we should throw Adam in front of everything. Alio. Yeah. 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 Hear me out. It's not, it's, uh, I thought I would have a really hard time cutting out all the carbohydrates. And the only, the only thing that I, I am having a hard time is my workouts kind of suck right now. My workouts are weak sauce. Yeah. Yeah. I'm weak. I, like right away, I noticed like a, a dip in strength. Mm -hmm. Like every, already, I, I'm the weight I was doing last week. Once was, you get over that, you're fine though. Right. I'm like that too. When I feel myself get weaker, I like I'll teeter for a couple of weeks. I'm like, oh, I don't want to get weaker. And then I, once I get over it, I'm like, whatever, I don't care. Right. Then I'm on, I'm on point. That, and that's how I feel too. Yeah. I'm, I'm very similar in that way that it's like, it's just part of the process. I'm mm -hmm. not worried about so it. So you were having this, what was this thing called? Red stag? Yeah. Yeah. It, but now you're nothing, no alcohol at all. Yeah. That's not, that'll mess you up. Yeah. I was doing that the last Last couple of weeks, I, I was just sharing that because I've been meaning to bring that up. You know that I I found these like two alcoholic drinks that I like. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you guys both a question. I I don't drink that. I had a little bit yesterday. Actually, I had a little bit of wine uh, yesterday because yesterday was the the official book release. And so Jessica and yeah, I went to we went to nice dinner. Toast. Yeah, we went to dinner at uh, was it Willard Hicks there in, in Campbell? Uh -huh. Nice little steak steak place or whatever. And had a glass of wine and enjoyed ourselves a little bit. I didn't have Z Biotics with me because I only had one glass of wine mm -hmm. do you guys use it when yes. you have one drink or yes. do you just use it when you have more than one yes okay so i, I personally wait till I, yeah i'm gonna have multiple uh just because uh for me it's i mean I'm, i don't really feel like a few of them but i know like you guys are a little bit more sensitive i to am i am extremely sensitive to alcohol and i, I tell you me what, too because i had one drink and i, I could tell yes and i was no. like i should just because I, I thought to myself one drink what's the big deal yeah no i feel i feel even just one for this me. is the only reason why i'm even experimenting with alcohol like this like I would never ever drink have a, a hard drink like that on a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Never. Cuz it makes you feel like dog shit, right? Yeah, because yeah. I just don't I don't sleep well that night. The next morning I feel slug even from one drink. But now if I have that, I can have a Z and that's what's kind of cool is like and I don't need to have three drinks. I literally can just pour myself one good stiff drink on ice like that. Have the Z-biotic right before and then I could kind of sip on it while Katrina and I are hanging out and stuff. And I really, yeah, because I, I enjoy the it. The one drink I had, one yeah. glass of wine, and I'm like you, I'm sensitive to alcohol. One glass of wine, and I could tell my sleep was a little off. I woke up a little bit more groggy, and my for me, it's my gut, right? My gut felt off. I had to take charcoal, which helps, but is not like zebotic. So I thought, you know what? Anytime I drink alcohol, I'm going to take this. So my out. my I still use the charcoal if I do multiple drinks. So like it's become start stacking. If I am going to have a drink at dinner or have like I just mentioned, which by the way isn't very often, right? It's you know maybe I'm doing even in the last month or so where I've found these drinks I enjoy maybe one time in the week I have mm -hmm. a drink or something. I will have the Z-Biotic. Now, if I have a night where we went out with Justin and Courtney where we're going to get down, like we're going to have four or five if of you're these. going with Justin, for sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're we're going to have four or five yeah, of these. Better Z-Biotic up. Yeah, not yeah, only am I Z-Biotic up, but then before I go to bed, I'm pounding water and I'm taking two or three of those charcoals. So that's kind of like my recipe mm -hmm. to like make sure that I don't feel. And I feel great, dude. I tell you, I feel really, really good. It and makes I, a big difference. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. At, least, at least for someone like me who... I think is so negatively affected by alcohol. And I don't think everybody's like this. Like, I think there's going to be some people that hear this or try that out and they're like, oh, I don't really notice a difference. But if you're somebody who doesn't drink a lot of alcohol because of the way it makes you feel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to me, those are the people that are probably going to feel the greatest difference with a product like that is that, oh, wow, maybe that's part of why you didn't feel so good. And that's what Z-Biotic right. is really helping. Well, so speaking of diets, you guys know how I like to increase my col dietary cholesterol intake to see kind of what happens. When I do, I get stronger, right? So I kind of went to the extreme relatively recently. So now I'm up to about, <laughs> this is the, now I don't necessarily advocate for this, although it's probably fine. But now I'm up to about 10 to 12 egg yolks uh, in the morning. So when I go back... And I make my shake after we work out. Or are whatever. you doing? Are you doing yeah. just substantial? Are you just drinking twelve egg yolks by he itself? Just eats it raw like Rocky. Right? No, so I, if, I'll do that you sometimes. You mix it with anything? Yeah, so I'll put the I'll put like Organifi protein there. So this morning, what I did is I oh, did okay. I did I, I brought a, a dozen eggs. So I do twelve egg yolks, water, and then two scoops of Organifi protein. So it's like fifty something grams of protein. Tons of the dietary cholesterol, which if you, you look it up, it helps with recovery, muscle strength, all that stuff. Of course, uh, at your own risk, raw eggs always runs the mm. risk of salmonella. Salmonella, although the risk is actually quite small. I've never, nothing's ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. But um, I've, I've been doing that, and I, I can tell every time I do it, 
I just get strong. I get really strong. I actually really like raw eggs and shakes. It makes it gives this kind of frothy. Uh, well, as long as you're texture. blending it with like a protein powder, I think that helps to kind of like the, the consistency of that's a little better. Than yeah, just the slimy. Yeah, uh, no, I couldn't do just the. Yo, egg. Have you tried it? Have just, you tried just swallowing them? Yeah. It's not bad. It's not hard. <laughs> yeah, it's actually easy. Is, well, yeah, I, uh, yeah. You guys saw me do this in. Uh, I mean, you train yourself to yeah. do it. I did it for a long time. Bro, I just feel I like, like you're younger. okay with taking down slimy stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> you just gotta open your gullet, Adam. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Open, yeah. just kind of relax. <laughs> yeah, just, Open the gullet, let oh, it go down. Like you're okay with that and to make you have a make sure you have a glass. That's weird of water. for Justin and I. You know, what I'm saying? it's, not, it's, it's different. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> I know. It's I'm not, like, hey, you guys try this. You operating guys manual. Pour it on your face instead. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, I'm sorry. It's uh, muscle memory. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, but it, but it, I, I love it. It works very well. There's some great articles. You can actually look up chole- dietary cholesterol. You can do this. Google dietary cholesterol and muscle strength or muscle growth and read the studies. It's actually remarkable. It's actually one of the more dependable things that can cause muscle strength and muscle growth. Yeah. Um, so, but people freak out. They, I have, they, they freak I have something I wanted to talk to you guys about. Mm. I read this article uh, yesterday or the day before. Um, I think it was, I think it was Basecamp who came out and said it. Basecamp or Coinbase. Oh, I saw this. Oh, you did. So uh, Basecamp and Coinbase mm-hmm. have now made it a rule that you cannot talk about politics on Dude, smart brilliant smart okay so this used to i don't know if people remember but this was like kind of the standard you know like there was like certain things politics religion yeah death like yeah. these are these are things like as a bartender too and i was bartender you just don't bring that up because inevitably you're gonna get arguments you're gonna get like you know people that are gonna get really pissed off or just like just very impassionate about these topics and it's just like why this is yeah. uh, deterring us it's, all from just having a good time it's because politics has permeated every single part it's of our taken lives. over our everyday and life. you want to ask yourself why why is politics and everything because they spend a lot of money Making that happen, you got to remember that these political parties have very, very wealthy backers and sponsors, and so we know of the billions of dollars that they spend on, you know, during election year or whatever. What we don't know is the how many news uh, agencies are being pushed in a direction, and we know for a fact you don't you don't need to be a rocket scientist to just pull up Fox News and CNN on the same thing that's happening and it's totally two different stories yeah. how can they possibly be well one Completely is working for one party opposite narratives it's yeah. so frustrating science has become uh influenced heavily now by politics so climate change has become a political conversation um eating beef or meat has become a political conversation like everything economics political everything is so damn political and what happens with that is mm. you have a lot of money making people feel very negative about certain positions so it's like you bring up politics here's what happens now people start judging each other they start to argue things happen at work brilliant it's brilliant that they said that don't talk about this shit at work it's really interesting you know how you, i always talk about my analogy is that uh politics is sports for nerds mm. right i feel like in the last i don't know four to eight years they they've done such a good job of capturing people that weren't into either one of those totally. right like people that were not politic people people that were not yeah. into sports they've literally forced it on us i do that's how i feel yeah i feel like I, there's I fucking hate it there's friends and people that i'm connected to that i know were not into any of this even myself you know i got sucked into it like mm-hmm. i I've, I've openly talked on this show since we started that eh, i don't pay attention to that mm-hmm. bullshit I mean, I I have found myself. They've done such a good job of getting well, into social too. They've also like used this phrase like "silence is violence" or whatever. And it's like if you're you have to have an opinion, you <laughs> yeah. have to say something. Like, no, not everybody has to say something. Actually, we prefer if you don't. Right. right. Yeah, I right. don't want to listen to your opinion. Yeah. How about and, that? And, it, and it, it it opens up companies. So once companies open up the door, like when they have this policy that's like we'll listen to everybody, and we want to make sure that we're ultra inclusive so make sure every, you say what you're complaining about. then they open up this door and it's like there's this never ending like and then you're a, a ceo like what do i do like this you know what was that publisher that was there were people trying to go on strike because they were going to publish a book from this author who has you know opinions that are different from their own or whatever it's a, it becomes so strange that was jk rowling was it oh that was one yeah right? yeah that was jk one. rowling they, yeah. all, they all tried to, to do that to ban her books and stuff like that it's like everything has become so political and one of the best things you could do for in my opinion as a company is we're not sorry we're going to ban these conversations no you, i hope that spreads yeah I hope, yeah like uh, you, you think it'll stick that. you think that it's not going to be a problem what do you think's gonna you think we're gonna see more companies follow that or do you think some of these companies are too intertwined 
too intertwined with the government already that they won't have an opportunity to do that. Um, I don't know. That's like I, I think of like Google and Facebook. Like why wouldn't they, and Twitter? Why wouldn't they? Well, fall? they've already set. They, see, problem with those tech companies is they've already they've already developed this culture. Like, how right. do you reverse out? Of what they've already done, yeah, right. that's a very difficult thing to do. Right, um, I think you have to. Especially do they have social platforms where exactly. other, other people are on there. So what you can't talk about it at work, but then you can get on your on your phone and tweet it out, or you can get on. Facebook they've encouraged or- it for so long that that's all part of their like. They want all their employees talking to each other constantly. No, it's I swear to God, read any article, and I mean nowadays you can read almost any article and science documentary. Does, I go on Netflix and I watch documentaries and. I, just because I'm hip to it, I can tell like, oh, this is political. This is political. I was, I was gonna watch a freaking documentary on the Amazon, yeah. and it turned into this political thing. Or I was gonna watch this documentary on eating a particular way. Well, this now turned political. No, like I've made I've made a concerted effort this year really to to block a lot of that shit and, and to really just like consume more things that like I used to really be passionate about, like music and and so that was one thing too that I was I was trying to address that with my kids and so I don't know if I told you guys but uh, like Ethan's been doing uh, music and he's been learning the trumpet. Uh, Dude, I played the trumpet. You played the trumpet? When I was a kid, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. I got another little sal on my hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I could only hope. Um, but yeah, so he's been he's been doing well with it. He's kind of struggling with whatever. But I was having a funny conversation with him because uh, I was like, well, you know, your uncle, uh, he used to play the horn, but he played it in a very unconventional way. Did I ever tell you guys this story? No, no, no. Okay, so we had this little horn. It was like a decoration <laughs> piece, right? I definitely would remember this. And uh, oh, this no. this brings up this this point that I've been meaning to bring up the whole thing. This is the dark art. This is the dark art that he figured out, which I don't know if a lot of people know how to do this or not, but he literally, like, you can belch on command, right? You can yeah. f- swallow air, yeah. Yeah. and then you let it out, and yep. it's, it's the whole thing, right? Yep, yep. So you can also do that with your butt. What? You can suck in air no, you can't. and then blast it out. No, you can't. Uh, my brother's even, my her. brother's living proof, and honestly, he Maybe killed he me ch- for bringing this up. Maybe he needs to get checked out. It was something. I don't know how <laughs> he did it. He had some kind of control with it, and he could like consume the air, blast out. So <laughs> he has this. He has this little decoration piece. It's like a. It's like a little horn, right? <laughs> and, and so the funny thing, he'd get on the ground. And he'd like bring his legs up in the air. He sucks. In, it, it makes a loud noise too, and he sucks it in, and then he put the horn there and he blasted it and it was like <laughs> really and yes and the worst part is like we had company over one time and you know they're they're looking at it like haha making a joke <laughs> put, put it mouth. right to their lips oh. and I'm, I just I just died I'm like you have no idea where that's been oh my god I believe so. I feel like he belongs on America's Got Talent I think he's right? got something there so I'm like now if you can actually capture that talent and then add notes to it Dude, I mean, uh, you got to be able to like open. Your, that would be amazing. You have to like be able to open your butthole and like create like a like a suck <laughs> in a vacuum. Like, yeah, that literally a, sound like that's a, like, a that's a very <laughs> specific talent. It was and he incredible. could do it more than once. He could do it like all the time, like just like you can swallow air and belt. I swear it was the same thing. Yeah, wow. yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. Part like, of you, it was a true I'm talent. A, I'm a little bit jealous. Like, yeah, like that would be so like when you were just the guys. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. I, think about all the opportunities. The party trick. Like right now, we're oh we're finished with the podcast. Oh, Dude, thanks. You Doug. could literally have an OnlyFans just about. Bro, that. yeah. No, right? just even think about it this way. Very simply, like we're done with the podcast. Oh, thanks everybody. I just walk by Adam and just. Right by his face. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> just, Anytime just I want. Just crop dust on command. There's it, so many options. And, and you would all have to give up because at some point you try to get me back, but I'm always loaded. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a that's just a pretty- Just chambered. That's well, a pretty back, I'm going to take us back to business talk because uh, I saw something You're else. You're going to make a business out of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your oh. brother, can, he's got money coming out of his yeah, ass. I'm telling you. Justin switched us over to farts. Talent. I'm going to switch us back over to uh, business conversation. How about- uh, on it being uh, acquired. Oh, Unilever, wow. right? Unilever. Yes. Unilever. Liver, huge. Liver. Yeah, a huge company, massive company. They yep. own all kinds of brands like Dove, and I think even Dollar Shave Club. They bought out the Axe Body Spray. Axe Body Spray. Well, they're a public company, which means they're going to disclose at some point what the what the what that looks yes, like. Yes, I cannot. I'm wondering how I'm much. I'm very spent. curious. I cannot wait. So it's so interesting to me because we have somewhat intimate knowledge of that company, and I think that we've expressed that you know when we first went over there and kind of saw how things were operating. We're like, ah, oh, we're very impressed with what we mm-hmm. saw, especially for how cool it is. Very cool brand, right? It looks cool and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's connected to Joe Rogan, makes it even cooler. A lot of people love Aubrey Marcus. Like that it's cool. But as far as the way it's operated, uh, I think that's what we thought, oh wow, this is this a lot of stuff that needs work here. And from what I understood, it wasn't doing so great for the last like three to five years. It was not 
when you talk about great performing supplement companies that we talk about or we, we hang out with like our friends over at Legion or Ganify, I mean, those companies are just every year scaling and grow, mm -hmm. doubling revenue and stuff like that just because they're doing so well. I don't think that's what was going on with Onnit. Now, I do know that they sold right after this pandemic and mm -hmm. they do have online courses. They do sell equipment. And so... I'm so curious is did did somebody whoever is responsible for making that transaction happen did they get them after a peak year right. during a pandemic and did they did they fool an investor going yeah. wow this is hard times for most fitness people right. this company is elevating and well the equipment site was definitely not the appeal I, I would venture to to guess because those margins have just never been good unless you find some hack and way to be able to uh, do it better than everybody else yeah but during COVID if you sold well equipment, yeah you're right you were making you were making some you're money. right you're right because people was, were and, limited and I guarantee people were paying premium because that was what I did. Oh, no, you're right. Remember no, when? They, remember I point. criticized when they came out with the, the whole Marvel line. Yeah, I Captain that, America. Yeah, I'm like, the, I, 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 my theory was the the licensing fee for that alone. I can't imagine you could sell enough equipment just to pay that. Right? Yeah. So that was my my speculation yeah. on it. So, but to your point, Sal. You know, and that's another thing too. The, the 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 kettlebells are overly priced. The weight plates that are done in in, in the Marvel overly priced. But during a pandemic, when nobody could get yeah. any weights, but you got to right. imagine a company like Unilever that owns, I think, like fifty companies. It's it's a huge company. They've got to have some pretty good people there that went and said, "Let's look at your PLLs yeah, for the last five yeah, 10 but years." The, okay, so this goes back to our point before that we were talking about. Uh, with you know not okay so if you go into uh if you're them right and you're you're looking at their last probably three years of pnls and mm -hmm. let's say they were kind of hovering whatever and then all of a sudden they have this record-breaking year when most fitness companies right. struggle okay sure. a majority of fitness companies last year had their worst year sure especially if you were brick and mortar but they have probably their best year they have a banner year after come and, and so maybe they see that as like the resiliency that this business has. Like, oh wow, mm. look at this. They they're cruising around, cru cruising around. Maybe and my guess, okay, I have no idea by the way. And my guess is they're somewhere between a fifty and seventy million dollar company. Like as far as you their, think they got bought for that much, or that's what their that, I think their I, revenue. That's what I think they were cruising at before. Pandemic. So what do you think they sold for? I don't know. Maybe, maybe over a hundred. 300 million maybe how much did the primal kitchen if, sell for remember they, he sold oh, that, that to craft that was quite a bit i think I it was like 100 and something million yeah that's interesting you know the thing with supplement companies people don't realize this but the margins aren't phenomenal terrible if you're if you're like if you do a good job your margins are like 10 15 percent if you're doing a great job most most supplement companies margins are less than that so what does that mean that means you're selling 10 million dollars with a product to profit one million dollars you know, a million dollars in sales would profit you a hundred thousand dollars. That's why it's not as impressive when you hear numbers like I just said, like, oh, they might have sold for a hundred to three hundred million dollars. It's like that sounds like a lot, but the overhead to produce that kind of money is extremely high yeah, and the I, margins are terrible. It's like the strategy is to start a supplement company, <laughs> grow it, and then sell it. That's how you get your, your payday, right? Is yeah. to sell it to another larger company. Right. And I and I don't know if the you know they 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 they're the leaders though with the like Alpha Brain was huge, right? Like yeah. Alpha they're like one of the they had Yeah, I think, that was still their flagship product. I, I believe it's still I think on Amazon it's still ranked like number one mm -hmm. or, or one of the top three uh nootropics that are out there. So I think that is interesting to a company like that that sees that that market growing and mm -hmm. they have that and they have a whole wellness brand. They know wellness is growing mm -hmm. yeah. then they have a, a banner year during pandemic when a lot of these fitness companies are struggling and you're seeing their stuff at you know whole foods and retail i see that stuff there all the time on right? it yeah oh at whole foods oh yeah i mm -hmm. didn't know that yeah alpha brain i see alpha brain there i didn't uh, know that i think that's all i see there if i'm not mistaken but there's always alpha brains always there in the in the packets the little packets the yeah if I, so i'm gonna go out and say that if i had to speculate on what they sold for you say more than 100 million oh well if they did less than i mean you 3x ebitda would be that would mean if they sold for 100 that means they only had a 30 million dollar company you think supplement you think supplement companies are getting three times ebitda yeah that really oh yeah that's what you sh you should expect that, especially if you're scaling if you if you've been scaling over the last three to five years you had a banner year like yeah. that ebitda was that Earn earnings before interest taxes debt 
yes. asset, something like that. Yeah. Okay. So if they if they did that, if they got sold for a hundred, then that you would speculate they're probably doing thirty to thirty to forty million. So if they and so I'm guessing that they sold somewhere between a hundred and fifty and three hundred would be my guess. Was their total sales? Oh, you mean that they sold? That for? they sold for, yeah. which if you divide that by three would give you a, an idea of what. Uh, and again, we're speculating. I don't know for sure, mm-hmm. but that's kind of what it would look like if if they did that. I wonder what direction Unilever is going to take them. What that's going to look like? I know. Yeah. What's, you know, what does what does it look like in terms of? Yeah, I'd I'd be really curious to see like what direction on it's going to be. Well, in. now to your point about them being a, a massive company who goes in and sees that you know maybe this. So if this takes off and does really well, what I would speculate that they saw was okay. They went in. They have this banner year during one of the hardest times. Mm-hmm. They're 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 profitable. They're doing well right now. And when we look at the operations, we're not impressed. Like mm. the operations are a shit show, and yet they're still having this much success. And they have a good-looking brand, and they're in a space that's growing. Mm. They may go, okay, we could, I could go, I could fire, up fire sixty, sixty percent of these employees, yeah. bring in our Which you could, uh, automate yeah, everything, yeah, bring in my CEO, bring in my, you know, all, bring in all my players, and we will get this thing running like a well-oiled machine. So that'll be that interesting. could be a thing, right? They could have gone in there and said, oh wow, look at all this wasted, like these people. What do you do here? You know, while you're working. Well, that was know. that yeah, was okay. our experience. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I mean, that's when we went around there talking to people. I would ask these employees, like, oh hey, what do you do? And they had a hard time communicating to me what they did. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, and the, the thing about on it, it's like huh? it's That's all rough. based on cool, you yeah. know. Like, so how how's that going to play into like being Unilever? Uh-huh. Like, how are they going to like keep this whole like edgy hip, uh, uh-huh. you know, ayahuasca? Thing? Well, say, say what you will. I mean, if they sold for big money, that's a big success. You know? Oh yeah. yeah, that's a big success. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no matter. For sure. I think you. I think it was it had the Midas touch. I mean, Joe Rogan touched it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got Joe. Ro- what 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 company has Joe Rogan touched right now that isn't doing? That's true. Phenomenal. I mean, that's it's like true. he is the Oprah of today. That was like that was like for a, sure. A, almost every company, their goal was to get to Oprah. Every Can, book. Yes. Yeah. If, if Oprah had you on her show, that's right. If, if Oprah could touch this thing, it's guaranteed yep. to go. Joe Rogan has that kind of influence that if he touches a brand right now, it, it's almost it's it's hard for it to fail. And yeah. so maybe they see that right. They see that okay, it's doing well, but it has lots of opportunity to do better mm-hmm. if managed correctly. Hope what I what I hope for them, you know, because I, I don't want to see anyone fail. Or I'm not rooting against them. Is they they, they don't think that this like. Oh wow! The, this banner year in the pandemic shows just how good they are, how yeah. resilient. They I are. would just imagine though that these investors with this, you know, Unilever's got to be a you know billions of dollar company, right? Yes. I, I would imagine that they're smarter than just looking at one year, right? That they're looking, and I know what you mean. They would consider it like, oh, this was a tough year. They did well. That shows some good stuff. Yeah. But they've got they've got a long history. Well, they've the, got to look at all the PLLs. Yeah, they, they it must fit a need that they have in their portfolio, like somewhere. Like, oh, we want to get into this. So that's direction. how I, that's how I feel. I, I, and maybe you see it as a, you can get it for a discount or price. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You ain't going out and buying uh, um, Organifi. Or Legion. I mean, you you buy one of those companies and you're spending at least you know lots of money, a lot of money, yeah. a lot more money. So maybe they see that as like okay, they've they've cornered a, a market that we need in our portfolio. There's lots of opportunity to do it better. They had some resiliency during the pandemic, which is good during this weird mm-hmm. time that we're all in. And you know, for this price, yeah, we can go in and like at bare, bare minimum, we could maintain this shit, or we could take it to another. God, level. it really is amazing. You know, being in into, into supplements for as long as I have, uh, it's really crazy to see this industry turn into what it has. Supplement industry was nothing back in the day. It was like, yeah, it was nothing like it is now. Now it's these are billion dollar companies, companies that are just crushing. Supplements have permeated. Every part of our life. Well, back, it- back in the day, you wanted to buy supplements. It's like, where do I go? Yeah. You got to go to the, the corner beehive or whatever supplement store, and then maybe they'll have a couple things, and that's it. And there's a picture of you know a buff dude on the cover or some weird right. name. Well, I mean, do you who do you attribute that to mostly? EAS. EAS took it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. yeah Weeder Weeder was the one of the first. Because yeah, they like, got in like Costco. Yeah, like yeah. you have Beverly International. I mean, Weeder, Weeder, like, Weeder, they, Weeder to me did was the first to see. Like I, I you know what I think of Weeder, and this is uh, I don't hopefully this is disrespectful a little bit, but yeah, careful how yeah, you're trading. He's I Weeder. Know, I know, I know. Kind of tap out of of uh, UFC. Like they saw a huge okay huge growing space. 
and attached a T-shirt line to it. It exploded. It had well, its moment. Weeder's Weider, one of the reasons why it grew. I mean, well, Weeder started. He used the magazines as a way to promote his athletes. Yeah. So he brought Arnold over. I mean, without Arnold, let's be honest, w- would Weeder even have done what they mm-hmm. did, right? Brings Arnold over, puts him in his magazines, uses the magazines as ways to promote his contests, his, his, his athletes, and then use them as ways to sell his supplements. So he was one of the first, it was one of the first companies to really do that. And then you had like Beverly International is very old. Twin Lab came out. Remember well, Twin Lab my, was a My point deal. though of talking about Weeder, where I was going with that though, is it's, and what I mean by it now, because I know it's a kind of a bad uh, parallel that I'm drawing here, but is that he, uh, in that community, he did really well. Yeah. Like EAS took it to the masses Correct. to me. He didn't take it outside. Yeah, no, of- nobody, no Joe Smo knows. No, what- Bill Phillips oh, right. took it to the next level. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Bill Phillips, I think, was the first guy to have like a hundred million dollar like supplement company. Like he came out and he had Body for Life, which was a bestseller. Mm-hmm. Everybody was doing it, sold a supplement. He came out with supplement review books, right? So this, you know, these books would tell you about what supplements were good. Of course, the supplements at the top were his, <laughs> not knowing that he was <laughs> so making them. brilliant. I mean, very, very smart uh, marketing. But yeah, EAS was Bill Phillips was the guy that wrote the that really wrote the book on what you see now with uh, supplement marketing. Yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Real quick, head over to mindpumpfree.com. See if you can find some guides that will benefit your fitness. By the way, everything on there is totally free. So we've written a lot of ebooks to help people through their fitness journey, everything from fat loss to muscle building to even reducing pain. It's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. Our first caller is Kyle from Wisconsin. Hey, what's up, Kyle? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, First off, I just want to say thanks for everything you guys do, Um, especially for someone like me that has been lifting for a quite a while and I know that I do things wrong, but I don't know why. And you guys explain kind of the reasons um, that things don't go correctly for like weightlifting and stuff. So uh, like my deep squats, I totally started doing that now. And now I actually see things in my quads and calves uh, unlike I've ever done before. So um, thanks for all that kind of information first off. Awesome. Um, but my question is, so I've been doing your guys' uh, suggested uh, mini cut and mini bulk, and I do it at three weeks, um, three week intervals right now. Um, I noticed when I do a mini cut, I lose about five pounds in the first couple days. And I didn't know if I was supposed to readjust my macros kind of after that initial weight loss that I'm guessing is from water, or do I keep just going with um, my previous macro uh, breakdown. That, that's almost certainly water, uh, especially when you go to a cut, right? So you're reducing calories. Probably one of the places that you reduce calories is in carbohydrates. You know, for every three grams of carbohydrates your body takes in, it pairs with about three ounces of water. So you can guarantee that it, you're you're probably losing. And then plus your sodium intake probably naturally comes down a tiny bit, which also retains some water. So I, I would I would guess that that most of that is is water weight, and so long as you feel like you're seeing good progress in those three weeks, like you feel like you lean out, I wouldn't re readjust or calculate your macros. I mean, how how has it been so far? Uh, I mean, how many cycles of the three on three off have you have you gone through now? Well, I'm I, I just started uh, a bulk then again this week, and uh, so I only did the one cycle of cutting. And then I started this bulk. I actually bought you guys' this, um, your shredded package. So I started the bulk with the first phase of the uh, aesthetics package. And um, the cut went great. Uh, I, I lost an extra couple pounds after that initial weight loss of, of water. Um, so I think it went great. And uh, now I'm on this bulk. I didn't get the same... Uh, water retention that I thought that I would have when I when I lost it for on my bulk um, is that something that I would be getting usually too or is it yeah you know there's a lot of variables there and, and now here's the thing with the mini bulk and mini cu- cut kind of protocol so for people listening right now essentially you know when you're cutting you're reducing your calories and you're bulking you're bumping your calories and we advocate for doing this for shorter <laughs> periods of time so rather than you know, doing like three or four months of just cutting to inject periods of, you know, slight bulks in between 
to prevent metabolic adaptations where the metabolism slows down. It helps preserve muscle, um, and it, it actually results in more fat loss. And then on the reverse, it, rather than doing just a bulk for 12 weeks, right, injecting some, t- some periods of time in there where the calories are lower, keeps the appetite up, helps with digestion, reduces inflammation, and reduces fat gain. But here's the deal. At the end of the day, what's your ultimate goal, right? If your ultimate goal, let's say you follow the Shredded Summer Bundle, which I know has MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, there's MAPS Hit, and I believe uh, some other programs in there, right? There's, uh, let me think, Aesthetic Prime Hit and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide, right? So you've got at least, if not more, 12 to 16 weeks of exercise programming in there or longer. So if your ultimate goal at the end of it is to build muscle, then you want to be in a bulk more than a cut. So what you don't want to do is do three weeks, three week cut, three week bulk, three week cut, three week bulk. I mean, you can do that, uh, but you're going to end up kind of bouncing back and forth and kind of maybe slowly progressing over time or staying the same. What you want to do is is figure out your ultimate goal. Is it to build muscle? Is it to burn body fat? If it's to do burn body fat, then I'd say two thirds of the time stay in the cut. The other one third do these kind of small, shallow bulks or vice versa. Otherwise, like I said, you're going to kind of end up where you're, where you started because you're going calories surplus into calorie deficit and it all equals out. Okay. So like if I, so what these phases, it does, I shouldn't switch between cuts and bulks uh, per phase. Like I shouldn't kind of base it around that. I should just kind of do like a like a uh, three week cut and a one or two week bulk is yeah. kind of what you're saying. If I'm yeah. trying to lose body fat, right? Yeah. If your main goal is to lose body fat, then yes. Like, and you don't, and it's not, and by the way, that's not wrong what you're mm-hmm. doing. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Like, what you're doing is, is okay. But to Sal's point, if your goal is more to get shredded and get lean more than it is to add 10, 15, 20 pounds of muscle, if that's more of a focus, then you just want to spend more time focusing on the cut and then you'd have shorter bulk. So I would do something like a three one. So I'd be, I would be cutting for three weeks and then I'd run like one week where I would do a calorie surplus and I go back to cutting for three weeks and I'd run a one week surplus just to break that up. So if that's your goal now, and just like he said, vice versa, if my goal was mainly just to put on size, I'm already relatively lean. I would bulk for three weeks and then only, and then reduce calories for one week. And again, what you're doing is not wrong because over time you're going to, you're going to lean out and build muscle going the direction you're going. Sal is just suggesting that if you, if you have more of a focus than uh, in one area than the other, then you'd want to spend more time in that if you want to see more results in that direction, if that makes sense. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, and to answer what you asked before, how it's going, um, I've, I've done the six months, you know, dirty bulk basically before in, in the past years, and then try to cut that off. And then after listening to you guys, totally change that thing up. And because um, mentally, I couldn't cut enough before. And now I think this is a, like, I can easily change my, my eating and um, stick to a stick to how I'm bulking or cutting. So this was just the best thing I could have uh, learned from your guys' show. Awesome. Right. Very cool. Well, thanks awesome. for calling in. Yeah. Thank you guys. No problem. Yeah. I think um, there's two things here, right? One is uh, people tend to, if they have a goal, they go so hard in that mm-hmm. specific direction that they their bodies really start to adapt. They start to run into problems, right? So cutting for too long, at some point the body starts to look at muscle and say, do we really need this? Maybe we should pare muscle down. You, you start to kind of slow your metabolism down, right? Hormone issues start to become a problem. If you bulk for too long, you can start to gain lots of body fat. Now you're starting to get diminishing returns. So going in and out of these two of these, of these goals uh, really keeps the body progressing. But yeah, if you have a specific goal, more of your time needs to be, needs to be spent there. For yeah, sure. you do have to have an overarching sort of uh, goal with that, so that way you can, you know, direct it in that in that fashion. I was actually wondering. I was going to ask you guys while he was talking, like, of you know, if if say like I, my whole goal right now is to get lean, like it's it's summer and, and that's my main focus. I know to to kind of go weave, you know, go heavy on on the cut, but then also add you know like a shorter time for the bulk. But what about you know just more focusing on maintenance instead of the bulk? 
bulk, what's the advantage of going up a little higher? Yeah. So I, you know, when, when I say, you know, come out of your cut for a little while and do a bulk, not like this aggressive, I, it's right. shallow. So it's, let's say what she's doing, by the way, right? He didn't say it, but it's written up in his question that it, it says he's just going like 10% over. Yeah. So if, if your maintenance is 2000 calories and your cut is 1500 calories, then you might have uh, four or five days at, I don't know, 2100 calories, like mm -hmm. just a little just bit above. A little flexibility. Ju exactly. Just a bit above to fuel muscle and strength and to prevent that slowdown in the metabolism. I do want to make it clear though, like what he's doing isn't necessarily wrong, right? It really depends on the, where the person is at. Like, so if I, if you were already in pretty good shape, I actually think that's a great way to eat, right? Like let's say he's- It's basically you're doing maintenance, but mm -hmm. but not being maintenance all the time. Right. Sometimes sometimes right. Sometimes right. And, right. And doing that, he'll, he'll lean out a little bit. And if he's not over consuming a lot on the bulk and he's doing a right. very moderate bulk, he should- add muscle a little bit every time he does that, then he should lean out every time he goes down the other direction and actually probably shape his physique up really nicely. Now, I would eat some... That's kind of like how I eat, right? Because I kind of keep my body fat percentage in, in pretty much check, so I don't need to go on an extreme cut or an extreme bulk. So I, I do something similar to what he's talking about right now. But if you are, if you are, you know, you got quite a bit more body fat percentage that you need to lean out and that's more of a focus then I agree with you that, you know, doing something that's more three, one, or, mm -hmm. you know, running, running a much longer cut and then going back to a bulk for a shorter period of time makes sense. So you see more results in that direction, but what he's doing is not a bad strategy either mm -hmm. just for overall health and getting a little bit leaner and adding a little bit of muscle. Our next caller is Jessica from BC, Canada. Hey, Jessica, how can we help you? Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Um, so just a little background on me and my story. So I used to be a chronic over trainer and under eater. As a result, I gave myself some pretty bad gut issues and also lost my menstrual cycle for about six years. Um, as a result of that, I had such low bone density that um, I ended up breaking a bone. So that was kind of my eye opening turning point. So that was about two years ago. Um, I totally reworked my brain around how I train and how I feed myself and my nutrition. Um, but in the process of that, I fell in love with multiple types of training. So I started out more like bodybuilding type training, like split training, moved into more of like functional training, you could call it lots of kettlebell work, almost like CrossFit, barbell, free weights, all that kind of stuff. I'm also a spin instructor, so I love to, obviously, the cardio aspect. Um, another thing is I tend to tend to enjoy, like, battle ropes, hit training, burpees, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, more recently, since listening to you guys, I got into strength training, more focusing on, like, that kind of four rep range and on my main lift. So I guess my question for you guys is, what program of yours would you suggest for me? I do have a kinesiology trainer background, so I do tend to write my own programs, and I just can't follow one. I start doing it, and then I get in the gym, and I'm just, like, kind of all over the place, so I need some help. Jessica, do you want us to be very direct and straight about this, or do you, do you need soft gloves? I need direct. <laughs> okay, so I think spin and CrossFit's a terrible idea for you. I think you should be as far away from that as possible. You've already mentioned that you had issues with that in the past. You're flirting with that right now. You're an alcoholic mm -hmm. who's hanging out at a bar. So <laughs> yeah. There's, there's there's no reason why. And the program that's best for you is something like power lift. You know, mm -hmm. is a, a program that's completely focused around, you know, your performance and strength and not around your body, your body image, not around anything of high intensity whatsoever. It's literally just about getting stronger. So if I was yeah. going to recommend like one of our programs, what it would look like, it would be a, like a power lifting type of program. And I would ask you to get rid of your spin class. I would ask you to avoid the classes, avoid the battle ropes, all that crap that doesn't, you don't need that. It's the complete opposite of what you need. Yeah. I would, I, I would say, you know, echoing what Adam's saying, I'd say, take your phone. It's, it's really hard, right? When you're in that, you have that state of mind. It's going to be something that you're probably going to be challenged with probably forever. It's very common with people that work mm. in the fitness space. And so one of the best strategies is to take this focus that you have, and it sounds like you have tremendous focus um, on this particular feeling that exercise provides or maybe the results that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Take it and move it to something else because just not having it isn't going to work. It's going to come back. So 
what you might want to do is take it and focus on strength. So you can become very fanatical about working out hard, doing lots of exercise, dieting. Take that and see if you can direct it towards, can I see how strong I can get? Let's see how strong mm -hmm. I can get with squats, with deadlifts, with bench presses, with overhead presses. Now, that's not where you're going to stay. Okay, so I want to be clear. If you get too uh, crazy with that, that can become a problem as well. But it is a place that you can shift for the time being. It's going to allow you to exercise in, in, in a way that you're probably going to benefit from. And it's going to allow you to eat in a way that you'll probably benefit from because it's hard to get stronger by eating too few calories or by under yeah. eating. Okay, now once you're there, here's the deal. Okay, I'm going to be very straight with you. The, it, the mental component is going to be the challenging component for you. I highly recommend you work with a counselor or a therapist and talk about this. This is a, a behavior that's going to continue to uh, – you're going to have to continue to work on. It's going to plague you. Uh, and the more stress you're under in life, the more challenge that life provides to you, the more likely you are to move in that direction. Um, and you probably already noticed that pattern. Like when shit gets hard – I go to my workouts. I work out more. I work out harder or I can control my diet. That's what I can control. Everything feels out of control. So I'm not going to eat. Uh, I'm going to eat less. I'm going to be disciplined or whatever. However, you you spin it on yourself. So focus on strength. You take that, 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 that crazy focus, put it on strength, and then work with someone once a week and talk about this. This is not something that's going to fix itself. It's something that's going to require a little I don't, time. You know, I'm never, I'm never going to tell somebody they, they shouldn't do counseling because I think everybody can benefit from counseling. But I also think she's the type of, sounds like a type of person that you have incredible focus and discipline. You just need to shift it. Mm -hmm. You just need to shift it. Yeah. Away. You, that's really what you- Yeah, for you, sure. So you, I actually have gone through counseling and all that kind of stuff in regards to like my body image and how I like go about nutrition. And I've definitely come- a long way. And like you guys said, it is a lifelong battle. Um, it will be something that's kind of inside of me forever, but I've definitely, my focus when I train isn't even on how I look. I want to train to be able to like, just feel like a badass in the gym mm -hmm. practically. You're a busy body. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, Adam's original advice of power lift, I think that's a good fit, you know, for where you're at right now. And mainly the rest periods, I mean, in the recuperative uh, side of that is really measuring that, you know, being disciplined and, and, and really uh, leaning into that a bit and seeing how that then, you know, progresses your strength. I think if you can kind of really get in that mindset of what's, you know, what am I doing, you know, for my body the most uh, to get it to recuperate, to regenerate, to be able to produce more power, uh, it, you know, in, in your lifts and, and to be able to measure that, track that, because I, I think that being busy is great, but, uh, you know, directing that in a healthy fashion is going to be, you know, part of your success. Well, and Jessica, you're, you sound like a, a great, I would love for you. So Doug's going to send you over maps power lift. So he'll send that, oh, over. Awesome. he'll send that okay. over to you. And you're the type of person I would love to hear back from you as you go through it. So please keep us in the loop uh, as you go through it. Do your best to stick to just that and, and get okay. good at that. And then I would love to hear updates from you as you go through that on your bench, squat, deadlift, and, and know how that whole that process is going for you. Okay. Amazing. All right. Yep. Thanks for calling. Thanks guys so much. No problem. Yeah. I think, you know, one of the reasons why I mentioned counseling with her and I figured she probably had done this in the past is she, and she's like, I'm, Oh, I'm so far away from that. But the question is I'm struggling. I need to do all this high intensity exercise. Right, right, right. Yeah. So the self-awareness is I've had this issue in the past. The self-awareness is not, this is an issue that I have right now that I need uh, some, maybe some of that help again. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's look, you're in the gym. It, you're right. You're an alcoholic and you're working in a bar. Very, very challenging. Um, exercise is good for you. So you don't want to tell someone to not exercise unless right. it's an extreme situation. But it's going to be that. It's going to be that constant conversation because what will happen is she'll work out. She'll follow power lift. She'll rest for two minutes or three minutes in between sets. And then she'll be like, I, I need to feel yeah. that no, intensity. I need to add some more. I need to go crazy. Well, and, and well that's the challenge and that's yes. the discipline that, uh, you know, look at that as the training. You know, if she can really shift the focus more on that aspect of it and not so much, you know, the tangible of like, I'm lifting more weights and, you know, I'm getting getting all fired up from that. More like, you know, how to really read your body and, and the signals. That, I, lo I love a client like this because she's got, uh, she has the education, so she understands, right? So she, mm -hmm. she knows, she has the self-awareness that she's already put herself through counseling. I think she's already made uh, leaps and bounds in the right direction and she knows where she needs to be. And you take someone like that that's extremely disciplined and you just you just channel that in a different direction as far as their focus. 
And I think she'll see tremendous results and have a ton of success. So I love I love people like this because I feel like they're much easier than somebody who has been ex- making excuses for decades of why they they don't want to in take some care ways, of themselves. In know. some ways, it could be challenging. I mean, I, I actually had a client who went from yeah, an anorexic who went and he started abusing um, anabolic steroids. So they went from yeah. one direction. It was a guy. He was an anorexic uh, yeah. before. Right. And then he channeled his focus to mm-hmm. building muscle, but then it went in that direction. It went crazy and extreme. It can happen with performance too. Well, yeah, yeah you, you're right. You're absolutely, but it, she's also aware of it. So a lot of times people like that, that make a shift aren't aware of their issue. They just, Oh, I need to get away, get away from this and I'm going to go a different direction and they go one extreme to another. So, and that's why I said, I'll never tell somebody they don't need to be t- counseling. I mean, everybody yeah. I think would benefit from seeing a counselor or having a professional to talk to all of us would. Right. So I'm never going to say not to do that, but I also think that she's in a good, a, a, a good place, especially since she has that experience. She is self-aware. She has the education. She just got to, she just got to channel that in a different direction. Our next caller is Stephen from Alberta, Canada. Hey, Stephen, how can we help you? Hey, guys, how's it going? Thanks a lot for having me on. Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, my question is, how do you recommend I proceed with hip movements when I have a mechanical issue, not a mobility issue? So some context. Um, some time ago, I had an x-ray, and my SI joint is just, there's a slight asymmetry, maybe like a quarter inch out. And that has a pretty pronounced shift in how I do a lot of my hip movements, particularly back squats. There's a really pronounced jog as I come up or uh, single leg RDLs or like banded pistol squats. My body weight really shifts to the one side to compensate. So, um, and I know it's not necessarily a mobility issue because I'm really good at, I can, I can squat ass the grass. I can, um, I'm really good with the 90-90s. So I don't know if you guys think I should maybe do a really strong regression or or what. Yeah. Okay. So um, essentially, mm. what you're saying is one joint is, yeah, it's is anatomical, built. not mechanical. Yeah, right, anatomically so. built. Okay. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. You know, I had a client once who had one leg which was actually shorter uh, mm-hmm. than the other. Yeah, I've had that before too. And um, I mean, one thing we could have done is right. We could have had him just exercise with both legs with a block underneath one foot. But what I did is I did everything unilateral yeah. uh, with him. And mm-hmm. I would suggest the same thing for you. I would do almost all of your lumbar pelvic hip exercises uh, as unilateral step ups and you know lunges and single leg exercises because. You know, if you put both legs on the ground, you're going to get some compensation, which is going to happen anyway in, in naturally because you walk, right? So you walk with both legs. So there's some compensation going on there. Uh, but the unilateral stuff will allow you to train each side independently without the other side influencing uh, the other side, essentially. So I would focus almost entirely on unilateral exercises, and I think that's where you're going to find your best uh, results. Yeah, I was going to, you know, definitely like echo that same thing because – you, if you focus on that, you're going to be able to then understand too all those little micro compensations and things that you know your, your body will tend to have uh, in a split stance or, or you know on a single leg uh, type of a situation. And so to be able to slow down and, and isolate that and really work on stabilizing and, and gaining control uh, is going to be everything. So to really go slow and then you know add where where you feel the most instability. Uh, I would really like hone in on that and like even add in some isometric tension there to to reinforce it and to really like start communicating a bit better with that process. So first of all, you can definitely uh, build incredible legs uh, never doing a bilateral squat. So you can do Bulgarians and lunges and uh, single leg exercises all day long and build incredible legs. So it's not a, it's not a huge loss to not be able to do a bilateral back squat ever again. So I would train you the exact same way. Now, the only thing that I would caution you is you're going to have obviously one side where there is some discrepancy and maybe a little bit weaker, and you have a one side that's going to be stronger. Make sure you lead with the, 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 the side that's most challenged for you. So the side that you are weaker in should dictate how you train the stronger leg. So sometimes when you, you, you push somebody in this direction to go all unilateral work, and they got one side that's so much better. They keep pushing the weight in that direction. That should always be the the second leg that you train. So always stick with the the weaker leg and do things like Justin's saying. Focus on you know stability and, and isometrics, and then you know mirror that for the other leg. Even if you could do two, three, four more reps or fifty more pounds, doesn't matter. 
you know, that way you stay even as you as you develop your legs. Now, as far as mobility exercises, um, if you don't have Maps Prime Pro, we'll send that over to you. You can okay. still do lots of mobility exercise because here's the deal with with these with these movements, these correctional exercise kind of mobility movements. You're working with your body's own range of motion. You're trying to connect with your body, so your body's going to dictate what that looks like, right? So. You know, two people's, you know, 90 90 is going to look very, very different. And you may have one side that looks very different from the other. That's okay. It doesn't matter. The goal is to challenge your range of motion and connect to those new ranges of motion, regardless of one side versus the other. Just out of curiosity, too, uh, Stephen, did you, when you got the x ray, did you, was this something you did like with a chiropractor or a doctor? Like, where, where did you get it done? Yeah. So I had an assessment with the chiro and he recommended I get the x ray and then, um, we kind of he did a few of his correctional exercises, but I haven't been seeing him since. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So that's yeah, a great yeah. question, Adam. Yeah, no. uh, <laughs> that uh, changes this now. Yeah. Why don't you get another uh, second opinion? Yeah. Get another opinion. Work with a sports medicine uh, expert or somebody. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go ahead and, and make sure. Doug, would you gift him the private forum also? So you know. One of my favorite functional doctor chiropractors is Doctor Brink, and he's. Yeah. For the most part, I, I, I don't like a lot of chiropractors. There, that's not to say there's not some good ones that are out there. Just th this happens to be like uh, chiropractor 101 is to mm -hmm. you know is to tell you you've got some sort of your one leg's a little bit longer than the other this mm -hmm. and you need to come in and see me and I'm going to adjust you and yep. and get you straight and right and, and I'm then the we got these supplements that also yeah, that's right that. that's right so uh, and I had a feeling that this might have been where you heard this from so. Uh, one, I would get a second opinion, like Sal said. Two, we're going to let you inside the forum. I want you to express some of this in there uh, uh, publicly, if you don't mind. And tag Dr. Justin Brink. That's right. That's tag right. Dr. Justin Brink in there and uh, tell him what you've been told and what you've seen and then see where he takes you from there. Um, I have a feeling maybe you, you might be just okay. Okay. But, I mean, I did see myself on the x-ray that there is a Sure. A, a definitely a definite asymmetry. Sure, sure. I mean, we but all, it, it, we all, by the way, we all do. We, right. no, nobody here, nobody has a, a complete okay. equal left to right side. Nobody does. Yeah, but it, but it could also mean, it could mean something. It could mean nothing. That's right. Um, so, mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah. So, so do what Adam said and then see what happened. And if that ends up being the case, then the advice we gave earlier still stands. And I don't know for sure because I don't see you. I don't know who this was, but mm -hmm. I just, I, the reason why I asked the question is this is a very common question tactic that chiropractic right. a bit of a hustle a lot it of is times. it's it's very very common right. um and so you know before we completely change your life and your training forever let's get a second opinion on what they have to say about that um and then we're gonna let you in the forum so we could discuss more about it so just quickly circling back you you recommend completely eliminating bilateral movements squats not until you you have somebody else give you another opinion i would say okay. yeah figure that out first and yeah. if that okay, ends up cool. being the case then yeah do that sounds good all right, thank you. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. No yep. problem. Yeah, the the it's actually not that common to have the left and the right side be different enough to where you have to completely change your training, unless there was an injury, like if somebody yeah. tore something or broke a bone. Right, you're in a car accident but and you, shifted you, everything. Yeah, but more often than not, like you said, Adam, you, you have a chiropractor come back, oh, here we got some, look at the spine here. A bunch of adjustments will fix this, whatever. Or I can see that your SI joint here is very different, therefore I have to treat it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, oftentimes it's muscular. You know, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, you could have a shorter leg, mm -hmm. not because your bones are shorter, but rather because one side is tighter. Your QL, right? It's a muscle mm -hmm. that, that attaches at your hip. Could be shortened on one side and correctional exercise could balance that out. Now, you could also have a shorter leg because the bone is actually shorter like the guy that right. I, I, I talked about Right, I look at it like the tension of rubber bands and like holding everything in place and, you know, and they, they look definitely from a, a skeletal perspective and so if anything is like a little bit off a lot of times they think that just manually that's right manipulating it is gonna you know get you back in alignment however most of the work is going to be you know adjusting uh muscular that's right and a lot of times it's it's literally just a stability and strength issue that's going on here that's causing some sort of a shift in the squat yeah, more often than not yes more often than not it's that but then when you go and see someone like a chiropractor and do that now I'm not, again i'm not i have no idea but and I could be speaking out of turn, but in my experience, um, I took a lot of clients like this that we completely resolved the issue by getting them more stable and strong and more mobile uh, because it wasn't something that crazy, you know. And everybody is not 
is perfectly symmetrical. I mean, yeah. so but you got to you got to be careful. You know, when you're talking to a hammer, uh, everything looks like a nail. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I tell you what, I've had I can't tell you how many clients I had that would go to a surgeon because of joint pain, and the result, the, the advice from the surgeon was almost always. Surgery. Right. Yeah. Oh, your shoulder hurts. Well, because well, they know how to fix things with surgery. Yeah. Oh, this is what we saw. There's a little bit of a tear here. I can scope that. I can do whatever. And almost all these people, through proper exercise, ended up not having to go uh, get surgery. And, and you see this with chiropractors yeah. sometimes as well. But again, we could be wrong. It's just, it's not that common to have a really anatomically different SI joint from one side to the other, unless there was like maybe a, a major injury. That well, happened. he also didn't lead this conversation with, oh, I've been dealing with all this pain and all this issue, and so then I went to go figure yeah. this out. Right. It was like I went and saw a chiropractor and told me I have this. Surprise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Our next caller is Grace from Wisconsin. Hey, Grace. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um. First off, uh, my question is, um, well, I'm a truck driver, and so I drive upwards of 11 hours a day, depending on if I'm picking up or dropping off trailers. And um, so I'm driving and sitting all the time. And um, uh, usually this doesn't happen, but if it's like a stressful day, like dealing with traffic or snow, which... Actually, no snow for right now, but it's up in the Midwest, so you don't never know that. Um, or uh, high winds, you know. I get um, pain in my neck and in my shoulders and in my back. Mm. And um, I was just wondering if like, there was something I could do to counteract that. See, I've been driving for upwards of... Uh, 12 13 years seven those seven of those being truck and um you know i just was uh i do have prime and i have prime pro but uh i looked over them and they were kind of like overwhelming and confusing i didn't know where to start mm. okay but i was like hoping to maybe do something to counteract that like usually it would probably be like something that really fast like that i could do like when I go to a rest stop to use the restroom or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. So, Grace, I trained uh, years ago some really cl some clients that ended up staying with me for a long time. They owned a company with the, that, that did what you did, and they drove trucks quite a bit. And this was a common complaint, right? They would get pain in their back. Uh, one of the guys I trained would get pain in his hips. Yeah. Sitting too long is just brutal on the body. It is. And so here's the two pieces of advice I have for you. Now, one is, yes, definitely when you stop, you should definitely get out and do five minutes of exercise. And you can bring bands with you on your truck, mm -hmm. and you can do some light rows. You could do some cable chops. You could do some light squats just to kind of move the body. Or you can pick some movements um, from MAPS Prime Pro. But here's the problem. The problem, a lot of people might not realize this, but... Sometimes truck drivers, especially when you're in, in a time crunch, you don't stop for a while, right? You stay in there for a long period of time. And so there are yeah. some movements you can do while driving. Now, you talked about your neck and your upper back and your lower back. So I'm going to give you a few suggestions, okay? So the first one is going to be for your upper back. So what I want you to do when you're in your seat is I want you to sit real tall you're going to bring your shoulders back, down, and then I want you to push the back of your head, the nodule that's at the bottom of your skull, mm -hmm. into the back of your chair and try to elongate your neck while pulling your shoulders down. So you're pushing your head down, up, and pu pulling your shoulders down, and you're trying to elongate. And you want to do that for about yeah. 10 to 15 seconds at a time. It's basically the seated version of our Zone 1 test, which I know that that's a common thing, too, with our prime programs is that it's a little bit overwhelming uh, because there's so many different things to address. But that's why we also tried our best to kind of condense that in webinars. And so if you haven't uh, checked those out yet, like Adam and I both, Adam did one a little bit more focused on Prime Pro. I did one a little bit more focused on the Compass test specifically. Uh, but what, what Sal's describing is you know what I had Doug kind of do against the wall, uh, and I think that that's just one that you want to repeat that as as frequently as possible based on you know the position of your head and, and leaning forward and grabbing the wheel and it's a really very stressful position uh, you're placing your body in. Yeah. So and then there's one more movement. You said your lower back. This is a very easy movement yeah. and it usually helps people with low back issues as they're driving. 
you can practice pelvic tilts in your chair. So this is where you're sitting down. And so you start by arching your back and then you go to rounding your low back and you're just moving your pelvis back and forth. And what you may find is the first few reps might be a little painful, might be a little stiff, but just doing this for five or 10 minutes typically will loosen up uh, the lower back. So just those two simple movements that I gave you while you're driving, if you do them, uh, you know, once every hour can make a huge difference. So I actually, um, I do what you just said, Sal, but all in one thing. So what I do, and this happens to me a lot, if I drive for longer than two hours, if I fly on a plane for more than two hours, uh, this is how I feel. My low back starts to kill me. My neck gets stiff. <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll, I'll sit up in my chair I'll tuck my chin in and then head. I'll drive my head back into the seat first. So that's the first place I connect. So I'm, and I'm going to keep that in that position. I'm holding that tension. Then I take the shoulders, like Sal said. I'm going to squeeze them back and down, push that against the back of the chair. And then the last cue is to rotate the pelvis, like you said. So I'm going to act. So squeeze my abs and squeeze my butt. So when I squeeze my butt, that's going to rotate the pelvis. You almost get a little tiny bit of a lift. Yeah, exactly. You're going to feel yourself kind of lift a little bit. And you, if you do this correctly, you actually will feel relief immediately. Yeah. I, I always yeah. know, like, and then I'm going to sit there and I'm going to keep that, I'm going to keep tension in all those, keep pushing the head back, rolling the shoulders, tucked down, squeezing the butt. I'm going to keep, intensify that for about 10 seconds. Then I'm going to relax. And then I'm going to go through all those points again. And I'm going to do that. All, as much as I can while I'm driving or while I'm flying until I feel complete relief. So that's what I would do while I'm driving. And then I would do some specific moves uh, when I stop at like a truck stop to keep it simple, quick, because you don't have a lot of time. I believe I've seen you before, and I think you do have bands and you take them with you where you drive. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I have a lot of equipment. Yeah. I have a adjustable dumbbell. I have bands. Yes. I have a cable machine. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> I think I've seen you post and tag us before. Uh, uh, do you, you have a suspension trainer? Just. Oh curious. yeah, I do have a suspension oh, trainer. And awesome. here, Upper Midwest, it's been like like below below like sub zero temperatures, but now it's like finally in getting into the seventies and sixties. So I was excited to get back into doing the suspension training again <laughs> yeah i mentioned that because i've had a um a truck driver that uh, i got into suspension training was able to you know hook that up and anchor that to the truck itself and so when you go on like truck stops was able to do a lot of moves uh, right there in place alongside so bands and and suspension training i would think would be a, a you know a decent fit for your your lifestyle so w's zone one which is in uh maps prime so I would do the move, and that's a zone one move where you you press against the wall or press against the truck. In this case, I would do W's with either the suspension trainer or with a band, uh, and then I would do uh, the hip thrusts, get down on the ground for a minute. Just those three moves, uh, I would do those for five or ten minutes at a truck stop. Every time you stop, between that and then what Sal is saying right there, you should get a lot of relief. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, I love your podcast. I listen to you all the time. <laughs> you know, I have lots of time to listen to stuff. So <laughs> thank you. My we, sister turned me on to you guys last year. So we talk about you all the time when we're on the phone. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank <laughs> what you guys discuss. Thank you so much for your support and thanks for the work that you do. You, you do a very important job for the country. Well, thank you so much for you guys. And I read your book. So I listened to it twice already. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Grace. Sure. Thank you. That's a that's a tough job. I know. When, with with health, you know, when you it actually, is. you know, I don't know if you guys have seen the numbers on truck drivers and, and their health, mm -hmm. and it's one of the most challenging jobs to do. Uh, the food that you eat is often on the road. It's so sedentary. You're you're sitting all the whole time, and you're in and when you get position. done, what does not sound good is going and hitting a gym for an hour, right? No, your like body you just want you want to crash. Yeah, you're, you're exhausted. You're and exhausted. Tired. That's the worst part. It's like you're exhausted, but you've been sitting there, you know, for hours yeah. and hours yeah. and hours, and so yeah, to to get to muster up the energy to then be physical, which your body really needs and is craving for, is a difficult. I yeah. would say one of the hardest positions to stay in shape that i've trained like when i think of clients that i because i've trained quite a few oh i like, mean now you got computer engineers that are pretty damn close right I, I, right I, working with them is pretty here's the thing every hour if you do like five minutes of just even squeezing a squeeze you know a ball or yeah. working your shoulder it's like a turbo boost it, it improves your performance with your job as well not yeah. just improving your health our next caller is arandu from arizona arandu how can we help you hey what's up sal what's up man so 
I have a question for you guys. I guess uh, I've always been prone to injuries <laughs> is the nice way to put it. I currently have a shoulder injury and a hip injury. But, I mean, I think I've hurt every joint in my body. Just, I don't, I, I don't know why. I guess from having the wrong movements is what you guys say. Uh, so, I hurt myself doing, uh, I don't even know what I was doing. Honestly, I think it was deadlifts maybe. Maybe sled pushes is right now what's really killing me is my hip flexor. Um, I actually couldn't walk for a few days. I iced it and then it was good. Uh, it's been a few weeks since, and now I can walk, but I'm scared to go back to the gym. Um, I've just started doing uh, Maps Prime Pro. Now, um, there has been one other time that I started doing that, and it felt like um, the injury actually came back, and it was doing. Um, I had thrown out my back, and I was. I think I did windmills, windmills, and um, it hurt my back again. So. I was wondering if um, you guys have any, I know you guys aren't doctors or anything, but I, I'd appreciate you guys' advice as, um, like, should I rest or should I jump back into Maps Prime Pro? Uh, it has been a few weeks and I can walk now, but uh, after, like, a full day of work, I know my hip will be inflamed. I, I've been trying to do, um, I do 90-90s, you know, and I my thoracic spine mobility is not the best because I'll wake up and it's really uh, aggravated. So, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, okay. So a few things that I'm hearing. Uh, one is that you, you sounds like you said you're, you're prone to injury. You've injured yourself quite a few times and you are trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening again. And then the second thing you said was I did a mobility movement, but I hurt my back doing it. So what this tells me is a couple different things. One I think you should focus on improving your movement patterns for a long time. I think you should give yourself at least six months of just learning how to move better. But there's one other thing I'd like to add, which is start to listen to your body, right? So you, can you hurt yourself doing a mobility movement? Of course you can. If you push yourself past the point of your control and your stability and your mobility. So what that means is you're going to have to approach these things a little bit more carefully and err on the side of caution, all right? So when you're doing these movements, ooh, that feels a little bit tight. Okay, don't go that far. Find the edge and play with the edge, but don't go past the edge. But I definitely think you should make this your entire focus for at least six months, okay? Because the pain going away doesn't mean you're done, right? Oftentimes when you hurt yourself, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of things that happened until you hurt yourself. So just because the pain goes away doesn't mean that the salute, the problem has been solved. I'm, I'm hearing a potential strong anterior pelvic tilt. That's what it sounds like to me. When you feel the hip flexor is really inflamed and tight like that, you got low back stuff that's going on. Have you taken the MAPS Prime uh, zone test? Have you done that? I haven't done the zone tests. Okay. I know uh, since I had injuries, I kind of just jumped straight into Maps Prime Pro. Um, oh, the, so, yeah. I mean, I, I I would encourage you to do the test just because I'd like to see where where this breakdown is happening the most. Are, are, so an anterior pelvic tilt looks like where your, your, your hips are rotated. It almost looks like you're sticking your butt out a little bit and you have a, 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 a more of an excessive arch in the low back. Do you know if you have this? Yeah, I've heard I've heard you talk about uh, yours. I've kind of been trying to fix my gait because it feels like as soon as I wrote, I mean, to fix it, I kind of just, uh, you know, br uh, brace my core, I guess, and uh, rotate my knees and, and that'll fix it. But, I mean, I can only re remember to do that like for 30 seconds and I'm sure it goes back. I'm just unaware of it. But, yeah, I do have one. So, yeah, what I, w what I want you to do is to, to lay down on the on the ground on your back bend your knees at about 45 degrees and then see how much of a gap you have between your low back and the and the floor. If you can reach all the way under there with your hand all the way into your forearm, you probably have this very similar to I do. And and some of that is is core control, right? And core strength, so working on that so the back presses on the ground. Uh, and then, of course, like doing like the hip flexor deactivator uh, exercise that Sal's taught on the YouTube channel. But I would go through the the prime the prime zone test and see where your your you you have the greatest challenge. If you see that 
when you go to do like a windmill, like you have a hard time performing the movement with no weight or anything, just performing the movement, then I would stick with all the exercises and fortification sessions that are around those zones. So more than likely, you're going to have breakdown in windmill and more than likely, you're going to have breakdown in the squat. That's what I'm guessing from what I'm hearing. And MAPS Prime actually guides you in like what movements you should be primarily doing. And I would be doing mostly that and any sort of training I'm doing would be focused around mobility and stability type training. Yeah, I would, I would definitely regress. It just sounds a lot like, you know, you really need to get in tune with body control, uh, and, and, and really like take your time with each joint. And, and so prime pro is great for that in terms of, um, you know, understanding joint function, understanding, uh, you know, your range of motion, where your limitations lie. Sal kind of talked about the threshold. So you're going to find sticking points. You're going to find areas where either you feel like, oh, I, I can't have access to that. So it's too loose or, or it's too tight and too restrictive. And then there's a pain signal. You need to pay attention to all that and then find that threshold try and stay close to that threshold and really squeeze your muscles, squeeze your body, try to connect to that. So then now you can start teaching your body that you have stability. You, you have regained that ability to, uh, you, you know, really control your body in that position. Uh, then we build off of that. It's, it's, it's really not going to be advantageous for you to, to focus on, you know, adding load to any of these movements for a while. Okay. Um, so are you, you guys are saying I should do MAPS Prime Pro and MAPS Prime? MAPS Prime, do the fortification sessions that uh, that are in the program. That's your workouts. Um, do the tests that are in there so you can find the best movements for you in MAPS Prime. And then use MAPS Prime Pro to supplement with joint-specific right. movements. And do this for a while. Give yourself a good amount of time where you're just focusing on this because it sounds to me like it's going to take a good, a good six months before – you can get back into the more heavy traditional resistance training. And then even when you actually start back into your resistance training, I would caution you to not be really pushing the weight, right? Really, I would do some stuff like Justin was suggesting earlier, like isometric stuff and really controlling the tempo, slow and control. Like you just need to, you need, your focus needs to be around control, stability, perfect the form, a lot of unilateral type stuff. So when you do transition out of prime and prime yeah. pro movements, I would, and you start to get back to like traditional weight training. I would do a lot of unilateral stuff. I would do a lot of stability control. Don't think about loading the bar like crazy. Think more about perfecting yeah. reps. The form. Literally, don't matter to you at this point. Like it's all about quality and intent of what you're doing with your body. So if you can get into that mindset, you're going to be a lot better off. Okay. All right. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'll probably. So I had already told myself this, but because, um, yes, it, you guys are hitting the nail on the head. Um, it feels like uh, I hurt myself like really bad. You know, last time I was benching, I hurt my shoulder and I couldn't move it. And I think a month later I was already benching because it felt better, but obviously I hurt it. Mm -hmm. um, so like Sal said, I, I guess I have to go longer than when it feels OK. So mm -hmm. I gave myself till 2022 before I touch a weight. I really just want to focus on my mobility. And uh, it's good to know that I can also um, intertwine Prime with Prime Pro. Excellent. Yep. yep. So, all right. So, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks Thank for calling. Guys. No Sounds problem. Good. Yeah, that's a that's a rough one. I think people think that when the pain is gone, the problem is solved. Yeah, everything's okay. No, you've solved the problem enough to get rid of the pain, but the problem is probably still there and it will cause pain again. Mm -hmm. You got to go past that point. Yeah. What's the root of it? And I think that's why it is very much of a, a you know, it's a hard thing to do to really like regress and kind of, pinpoint it back down to, uh, you know, what angle, what, you know, what function mm -hmm. uh, of movement is it specifically that's, you know, it, the stemming, uh, you know, and where that pain is stemming from. Well, this is also why, you know, in-person training is so valuable too, because, yeah. you know, we're guessing right now, like it, it's hard to say without really seeing the way he moves. I'd be able to give him way more specific answers totally. of like, I want you to do this exercise and this exercise based off of watching him move. But 
having him try and articulate what he feels or thinks is wrong and then us try and troubleshoot and guess what we think is wrong right. yeah. is really, really difficult, you know, because when I hear really tight hip flexors, I hear someone's low back bother them all the time. I default, I think, anterior pelvic tilt. Right. I, it's, right. you know, close to home for me. Those are my issues. And I know, too, that if I were to go load windmills in, in a very in a position like that with an anterior pelvic tilt and rotate like that. Right. And rotation is another one that's very much of an exposing type of a movement yes. to any like yeah, inadequacies, you know, up the kinetic chain. So, you know, it's just those things and the shoulder injury, all these types totally. of things. We just need to address a lot. There. Yeah, totally. Look, if you like what you hear, you got to go to mindpumpfree.com. We have some great guides there, and they're all totally free. So we have guides that will help you burn body fat or train your shoulders or your arms or your glutes or your legs. We have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Somebody listening might think, oh, that means the first month or two nothing happens. No, no, no. We said the scale might not move. That's right. That doesn't mean nothing happened. Remember the earlier example of where I said the person who does it wrong loses 10 pounds, but five pounds of muscle, five pounds of fat. So they're the same, they're just smaller, same body fat percentage. What we're talking about is the scale doesn't move 